Hi friends, we go for April month Yojana 2023, Startup India. So before going to that uh, articles, the very basic question is, right now we can see government is giving greater focus on the concept of startups. So what are the importance of startup is? So we will see the articles, what it says about startups and what are the initiatives in India government is taking to promote startups. The reason why startup is important for India and Indian economy is startup creates a lot of opportunities for Indians to come out with their innovative ideas which can be converted into a commercial product or services. That can contribute for the economic development. It also creates employment opportunities. None of the most important thing is in India right now we have this term called demographic dividend that is most of our population very close to 60 to 65 percentage of population is in working age group that is 15 to 65 which creates lot of opportunity to develop our Indian economy from developing status to developed economy that can be done only through initiatives like startups because startups will provide lot of economic value and social value to the system. It creates employment opportunities and also it creates export imports. Great example for startup is countries like US and most of the services and products what we use in our life, if you go and trace the history of it, it all comes out with a startup. Good example is Apple, Facebook, these are good examples of startups of US economy. Right now we can know the value of that particular products in the uh, world and also uh, how, it, uh, how we are using as a individual in day to day life. So that is the reason why government is giving greater focus on startup. So with that background we will see the uh, articles. So the uh, four articles what we are going to discuss here is uh, uh, Startup India Action Plan Foundation of India Startup Ecosystem, Agri Startups, Opportunities for MSME and Reaching the Last Mile. So, so that first we go for this Startup Action Plan Foundation of Indian Startup Ecosystem. Startups are the new new part of our Indian economy right from 1950s as we got our independence by 47. Right from 1947 we are transformed from agriculture economy and we are primarily we are doing agriculture then we move towards manufacturing then we move towards services. Next level is we are focusing on the startups. So with that background so we have paragraph 1 <coughs> and paragraph 2. So paragraph 1 speaks about how many startups are there in India right now, correct? So they have given the year from 2016 to 2022. So 2023. So 2016 there were 500 startups. So right now it's very close to so 90,000 startups. So right now we can see that startup culture in India is emerging a lot and uh, it is being globally recognized that is another most important thing. Only few countries in the world we can see the startup as a part of their economy one is US, Israel and there are few countries in the world right now India is also in that list where we can see that globally people are recognizing that India is moving towards startup economy okay, that is given in paragraph 1. So paragraph 2 so they given a fact around 47 percentage of recognized startups. So recognized startups have one women director, one women director. So this is also another important social dimensions of startup and we know that in India we speak a lot about gender equality, both men and women are equal. In that dimensions, right now we can see facts is showing that around 40 percentage or 40 some very close to 50 percentage of startups, we have one women director in it. So this also shows that women is taking part in development of the country in from economic sense. So that is going in paragraph 2. So next we go for next page, paragraph 1, paragraph 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So in paragraph 1, so they speak about the life cycle of startup. So life cycle of startups. So first one is it starts with ideation. Uh, I will see what this ideation is. Ideation 
validation and early traction early traction and next thing is scaling so this is the stages of startup so ideation is nothing but uh, every individual if they want to be an entrepreneur they can also try it out in startup ecosystem ideation is very basically to say that you have an idea to solve some problems with the society that provides a lot of business opportunities that's called ideation very good example for understanding ideation is uh, take example of zomato or swiggy so what they are primarily providing is uh, they are providing door step delivery of food items correct so that's an ideation and if you are a consumer you can benefit a lot out of it especially in modern day era and especially during pandemic that's an idea correct and validation validation it, what are the next stages of life cycle of startup is validation so everyone have an idea what is validation is checking the feasibility so every idea cannot be translated into actions they check that feasibility that is called validation next come early traction early traction is related how much people are using it how much people are interested in that particular ideas and finally scaling up scaling up is making into larger uh, system so this is a very basic common man understanding beyond that for exam point of it's not required so this is uh, uh, given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 so this is a life cycle for startup across the world any startup happening across the world this is the basic idea this is the basic life cycle in paragraph 2 it speaks about this uh, startup india action plan startup india action plan so this this is on the side of the government so to encourage startups in india so government comes out with this action plan so the action plan consists of 19 action items 19 action items so 19 action items and uh, primarily focused on so simplification and hand holding simplification hand holding second one is funding support funding support for people going for startups and incentives and uh, they are also encouraging this industry academia partnership industry academia partnership to give a good example what is industry academia partnership is uh, right now we speak about this electric vehicle one of the biggest most successful product in india regarding electric vehicle if you take two wheeler we have this uh, uh, ether and if you go and check the history of ether that's an idea come out by two individuals they want to have an electric vehicles with uh, based on electric motors and they came out to institutions like premier institutions like iits that is industry academia partnership so that is one and finally they focus on incubation so this is what this action plan is primarily focused on with 19 actionable items that's good in paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 speaks about so right now in india we have this dpiit that is department for promotion of industries and internal trade that we call as dpiit so they are focusing on creating the startup india hub startup india hub and this hub is focusing on this one stop online portal so from it's a self explanatory one stop online portal and uh, this this helps to link with stakeholders and also it ha works on hub and spoke model so it helps to link with all the stakeholders stakeholders are nothing but who are the people involved in the startup ecosystems starting from individuals who are coming out with ideas government uh, and also we have an experts funding all comes under this uh, uh, concept so uh, this is run by government so startup india hub that is given in paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 so what are the initiatives primarily focused on funds so right now we have this ffss what is fs fs means funds of funds for startups uh, next one is sisfs that is startup india seed fund scheme that is there and we have this cgss that is credit guarantee scheme for startups so these are primarily focused on funding funding initiatives of the government so that is given in paragraph 4 and paragraph 5 so they describe about this uh, funding mechanisms 
for example if you take this SI uh, SFS that is Startup India Seed Fund Scheme. So, they are focusing on providing debts in early stages or grants to the startups. Debts are nothing but money given like banks. So, debts and uh, grants and uh, FFS that is Fund of Funds for Startups, it is focusing on private equity. Private equity means allowing uh, other players to invest in that ideas that is called uh, uh, private equity and we have this credit guarantee scheme for startups focusing on debt funding for mature startups. So, uh, when the startup moves to the la next level where this debt funding is being provided. So, that is given in paragraph 4 and 5 and paragraph 6 speaks about this again DPIIT have this startup ranking framework. Startup ranking framework. So, startup ranking framework that is primarily focused on identifying good practices. So, this helps to identify good practices of various other startups that helps the existing startups in states and union territories, states and union territories. Across India, they try to collect the good practices that is given under this aspect, under this uh, startup ranking framework and also in paragraph 7, Startup India Yatra, Startup India Yatra. So, this is to encourage startup among common man, especially especially among youth to create this culture of entrepreneurships that is given in paragraph 7. So, these are the actions taken by the government for startup economy. Next page we have this paragraph 1, paragraph 2, paragraph 3 and paragraph 4. So, in paragraph 1, so again Department of Promotion of Industries and Internal Trade. So, they are focusing on national startup awards, national startup awards. This encourages competition among uh, various startups. So, that will bring, bring, uh, bring the best out of the startups. So, the award is being created and uh, focusing on innovation, diversity, quality, all these are simple, important criteria on which is being done. Uh, next in paragraph 2. So, so, we have in India National Startup Advisory Council, the name itself says St National Startup Advisory Council. This is an institutional mechanism created in India and they are primarily focused on expanding startup ecosystems in India and uh, focusing on developing startup environment in India. So, that is given in paragraph 2 and 3. So, right now it is an institutional mechanism created for promoting startup and paragraph 4 which speaks about this uh, national startup advisory council council it focuses on data driven data driven policies by this national startup advisory council through stakeholders so collecting data from all stakeholders they are creating lot of policies to promote startups so that is given in paragraph 4 uh, next news article is uh, <coughs> Agri Startups Challenges and Opportunities. So, in this paragraph 1. So, we know that Indian economy is majorly contributed by service industries, but agriculture is where lot of people are employed. So, there is a possibility to make agriculture more efficient and productive for that startups can play a major role. So, with that background we will see that uh, uh, article whereas this in paragraph 1 it spe see, speaks about the unique character of Indian agriculture. First and foremost thing is India's arable land. So, they have given the fact it is around 156 million hectares, second highest in the world after US, second in the world after US. So, only US has the largest arable land when compared with India. So, India has the uh, second largest one. They have given the numbers of 156 million hectares. Then apart from this, another unique characters about Indian agriculture is uh, we have diversity of climate that is 15 agro climatic zones and also we have 8 major soil types. So, why this is importance is this provide the potential for producing lot of commodities in agriculture. So, in Indian agriculture we have different 18, uh, 15 climatic zones and um, 8 type of soils 
which has the potential to develop lot of agriculture commodities start for example starting from uh, wheat or cotton to saffron correct so all these are being done in india the because of this unique characters and diversity of indian agriculture and apart from this they also given the position of india in certain agriculture commodities so for example like uh, uh, world's largest producer india's world's largest producer so largest producer of milk pulses millets and jute so these are the agriculture commodities india is leading in the world and also in next page we'll see that so india also second largest paragraph 1 2 3 4 and 5 second largest producer of wheat fruits and vegetables fruits and vegetables so this clearly shows that india is leading in lot of agriculture commodities if agriculture startups aids indian agriculture further so it can be a biggest promoter of indian economy and also contributing for export of agriculture commodities so with this basic understanding in paragraph 1 we go for paragraph 2 So in paragraph two, it speaks about agri startups. Agri startups. So right now in India, agri startups are primarily focused on technological interventions, innovations, innovations, and technological intervention. So technological intervention. And right now in India, we have around three thousand agri startups. There's another fact here: three thousand agri startups in India. So, as in paragraph three, it speaks about uh, where we have the ge geographical distribution of sta agri startups. It says that sixty percentage of agri startups are in tier one and tier two cities. Tier one and tier two cities. What is tier one, tier two cities? Basic understanding: tier one, all metro cities, and tier two cities are below that, or what we call as after state capital. When you take any state, most of the state capitals comes under tier one categories. Next biggest city in the particular state comes under tier two cities, and most of the city percentage of agri startups are in tier one and tier two cities. So that is given here, and uh, the city wise distribution is first is Bangalore. So Bangalore has the first largest number of startups in India, then followed by Mumbai and by Delhi. Next is Delhi. So these are three cities where startups are very high in India. That is going in paragraph three. So paragraph four, where agri startups are mostly concentrated, how they are improving Indian agriculture, they have given the major I, uh, focus. One is output market linkage. So this is the area where agri startups are focusing. The next one is input supply. Input supply. So next one is uh, mechanization. So mechanization. Next irrigation and mostly in all areas of agriculture they are focusing on and financial solutions. They are providing financial solutions. Financial solutions and. Uh, post harvest management so these are the few areas of uh, startup agri startups focusing in agricultural activities and even they have this logistic services <coughs> logistic services what is output market linkage startups are working in this area how farmers are reaching to the market so they can come out with certain apps and all those things where farmers can directly reach to the consumers whereas input supply it focuses on assume assume fertilizers inputs when need to be fertilizers applied where we don't have any scientific ideas people generally put on their i wish so right now that can be in a startup focusing on all those things the next thing is mechanization so uh, trying to make indian agriculture more uh, machine based rather than labor based which has a greater productivity irrigation 
So, uh, when to irrigate, how to irrigate, timing of irrigation, where startups can play a major role, financial solution, providing credit, this we can see in our normal day to day life, correct? How our uh, apps are being created for it and how our uh, scores are being used for this and post harvest management. So, this focus on one of the biggest problem in agriculture is uh, loss of outputs of agriculture due to unscientific management of uh, safe, safeguarding it and also logistic services. So, these are the areas where startups are working that is given in paragraph 4 and paragraph four, uh, 5. So, mostly all these problems are solved through modern, modern day te technologies or what we call as cutting edge technologies. So, startups are using cutting edge technologies for solving all these problems. So, what are those cutting edge technologies? It is listed here. One is data, data digitalization. So, data digitization and SCAAS, software as a services, machine learning, machine learning, data analytics. So, data analytics and blockchain, drone, AI, blockchain, drone. So, all these are being employed by startups to make agriculture most productive. So, and to solve the problems as we discussed in paragraph 4. Next page we have paragraph 1, 2, three and four. In paragraph one, it speaks about this agri business incubators, agri business incubators right now being established in most of uh, R and D institutions, R and D institutions, agri business incubators and uh, it is it's focusing on so, growing variety of services like equipments, facilities, business development, monitoring networks. So, these R&D institutions helping in developing agribusiness uh, incubators by providing all these things, technology, finance, mentoring, correct? Technology, finance, mentoring. So, all mentoring, networking, mentoring, networking. So, all are provided by this ag agri business incubators that is in paragraph 1. Paragraph 2, it speaks about this uh, agri focused incubators in ICAR, Indian Council for Agriculture Research. We have this 100 agri focused incubators. So, again this is promoting agri startups in India that is given in paragraph 2 where a particular institution called Indian Council of Agriculture Research is promoting agri startups and they have given some facts for it. Where paragraph 3 speaks about a scheme Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana. So, under the schemes what government says is they are going to provide 5 lakhs for ideas and uh, 25 lakhs for seed, seed stages. We saw this life cycle of uh, startups. Based on that, the uh, government is providing this uh, financial assistance. So, financial assistance under the scheme for agri startups. So, that is gone in paragraph 3. And paragraph 4, where we have Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers, Agriculture and Farmers are creating annual events, annual events like Agri Hackathon. So, Agri Hackathon. So, this is again promoting Agri startups in India where they found they want to find out some innovative solutions. So, innovative solution for Agri problems. Agri problems. The, the entire page highlights how government is keen to promote Agri startups. In all the paragraphs, we can see a lot of new initiatives of the government. Next page we have paragraph 1, paragraph 2 paragraph 3 and 4. <coughs> so, in paragraph 1, apart from Ministry of Agriculture, we have this Department of Science and Technology, Department of Science and Technology creating 25 technology innovation hubs, 25 technology innovation hubs and this is primarily focused on premier institutions of India, premier institutions, premier institutions means like IITs and IAMs. So, they are creating this technology innovation and as it is a technology innovation hub, they will not be IIM, it will be IITs and they are going to focus on IOT, Internet of Things and AI in agriculture. So, this we can see from Department of Science and Technology trying to promote agriculture 
through technology innovation uh, hubs. So, in this, the few examples are given. One is IIT Karakpur. So, IIT Karakpur. So, IIT Karakpur is working on AI based precision farming, AI based precision agriculture of farming. So, artificial intelligence based precision farming right now this is being promoted by I IIT Karakpur and uh, they are focusing primarily on crop and soil health monitoring, crop and soil health monitoring. So, similarly IIT Bombay. So, IIT Bombay is focusing on aerial robotics. So, aerial robotics uh, and using drone imaging, drone imaging and spraying. So, they are going to use drones for uh, use of for pouring pesticides or monitoring crop uh, productivity all these things. So, that is IID Bombay is working on it. These are few examples where you can use it in your answers. And apart from this in 2016 that is given in paragraph uh, 3. So, this is paragraph 2 IIT examples of paragraph 2 in paragraph 3 2016 department of science and technology have created a program called national institute. So, national initiative for developing and har harnessing technology Niti national initiative for developing and harnessing technology they are, uh, harnessing innovations. So, innovations and this primarily focused on startups I will repeat again national initiative for developing and harnessing innovations. So, this is in uh, again DST is doing it in from since 2016 that is good in paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 these are some of the recent initiatives of the government focusing on utter innovation mission. Utter innovation mission. So, where we have this 1000 <coughs> sorry 10,000. So, 10,000 utter tinkering labs. So, Atal tinkering labs and incubation centers and Atal community innovation centers. So, all these are being done by under this Atal innovation mission. Some facts are given like 50 Atal community innovation centers. So, so this are all related to initiatives of the government for promoting agri startups. The next page paragraph 1 paragraph 2, paragraph 3 and paragraph 4. So, in paragraph 1 it speaks about uh, 2023 is identified as a international year of millets in that right now we have 500 startups, 500 startups working on millet value chains, millet value chains. So, that is another important information especially under this uh, Indian Council for Agriculture Research and uh, Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana. So, that is given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So, uh, in that paragraph 2 out of 500 startups, 66 startups have received around 6.25 crore as a funding as funding. So, that is given in paragraph 2 whereas paragraph 3 speaks about the current budget in current budget that is 2023 and 24. So, government has announced this agri focused accelerator fund, agri focused accelerator fund to promote startups in agriculture sector and especially in rural agri startups. Rural agree startups and finally, paragraph 4. So, it given some facts for it. So, for the as per economic survey, so economic survey 2022-23. So, these are the government documents where we can refer in our answers says uh, agree startups have raised around 6000 or 6600 crores for agree startups being raised in the last year and uh, and uh, around for uh, private equity investors over last 4 years growth rate of 50 percentage per year 
so these are all based on private equities so lot of outsiders are investing in agri startup it's not government as funding it it's all outsiders are funding the agri startup this clearly shows the confidence in agri startups okay next article is opportunities for msme in amritkar so msme stands for micro small and medium enterprises in manufacturing economy so these msme sectors have a biggest impact on the development of the country so that is the reason why government is giving greater focus on it micro small and medium enterprises so in that aspect we go for a paragraph 1 so paragraph 1 speaks about the importance of msmes to modern day system and especially right now government is focusing on infrastructure development infrastructure development for that government have this national infrastructure pipeline national infrastructure pipeline and also we have this atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan so this is the two primary focus of the government developing infrastructures which provides lot of opportunities for msme that is given in paragraph 1 so they have under this lot of goods and services are being consumed by the government where msmes can provide a lot of opportunity msmes have a lot of opportunities to provide these goods and services that is going in paragraph 1 in paragraph next page paragraph 1 so paragraph 2 paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 so in paragraph 1 it says about the potential so potential of uh, this initiative of um, uh, atmanirbhar bharat and all those things So first and foremost thing is MSMEs MSMEs can use the digital technologies so digital technologies to gain the advantages of existing opportunities that is given here by based on digital technologies they can improve their operations new customers and explore new markets that is going in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 again related to MSMEs says about the schemes of the government so what are the government schemes for MSMEs so government schemes one is uh, epcg that is export promotion capital goods so right now government is giving greater focus on it so whenever some SM, some msmes are involved in this they are promoting this aspect of capital goods export promotion capital goods scheme and next thing is merchandise exports from india scheme merchandise exports from india scheme that is the second one and uh, this primarily focused on export opportunities of export opportunities for msmes export opportunities for msmes next paragraph 3 speaks about the potential of msmes in medical devices so they can focus on medical devices or uh, ppe right now during pandemic or it solutions in healthcare so all this can be taken leverage by msms that's an opportunity in modern day era, uh, india that is going in paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 a new opportunity regarding green energies so renewable energies can also be focused by msmes by msmes so in this page we can identify how in india lot of opportunities existing for msmes so when it is new renewable energy it can be solar wind solar wind where they can focus on providing solutions storage solutions basic like creating batteries for all these things so these are the potentials what given in this paragraph and next we go for next page paragraph 1 paragraph 2 3 4 5 6 so in paragraph 1 so so in paragraph 1 says about this uh, local manufacturing and local sourcing so local manufacturing and local sourcing which is being promoted by the government which provides greater opportunities for msmes as government is the major consumer of products and services and government have a policy we'll see that later where local consumptions are being encouraged especially we can see in newspapers regarding defense sectors and all so that has a great opportunity that is given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 speaks uh, speaks about the importance of msme why msme is required around 45 percentage 45 percentage of manufacturing 
is done by MSMEs, 45 percentage of manufacturing is done by MSMEs and similarly 110 million people are employed. So, so these are the potential of MSMEs, why we need to focus on MSMEs that is given paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 also speaks about MSMEs also helps in paragraph 3 focus on decentralization. So, decentralization of industries. What is decentralization of industries means as it says micro small and medium enterprises these uh, companies can be created in rural areas which results in development of rural areas also. So, uh, when government is giving importance for MSMEs industries can be developed across India there is no difference between urban and rural areas because this micro small and medium enterprises can be accommodated in any geographical regions. So, that is the biggest advantage of MSMEs that is decentralization of industries that is going in paragraph 3 and this helps in socio-economic development, this helps in socio-economic development, socio-economic development that is going in paragraph 3 and paragraph 4. So, MSMEs also play a major role in Indian economy by providing MSMEs apart from this they have a direct impact on GDP employment which we see or saw right now employment and also innovation. So, MSMEs can promote lot of innovations and finally, exports. So, these are the potentials of MSMEs that is going in paragraph 4 and paragraph 5. So, what is the role of government in it? How government is promoting MSMEs? First thing is through funding. So, government is promoting uh, providing funding we saw it in the previous page and technological upgradation. So, technological upgradation. So, for that government is helping MSMEs skill development. So, MSME is also being provided skill development, market access. So, these are all promoted by the government to encourage MSMEs that is given in paragraph 5 and paragraph 6 speaks about funding opportunities. We saw that credit guarantee fund transfer, credit guarantee fund transfer for MSMEs we will see the next page that related to that paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. So, when you take this paragraph 1, so we have this credit guarantee for micro and small enterprises. So, this is one in scheme of the government and we have this pr prime minister's employment generation program and micro and small enterprises cluster development program. So, this is all the focus of government this we can see in the previous funding supports these are being funding for MSMEs. So, government is promoting that and next technological upgradation well, that is going in paragraph 2 we have this TUFS that is technological upgradation fund scheme where government is providing uh, financial assistance to the MSMEs to upgrade their technologies that is taken care by the government. And for skill development in paragraph 3, it speaks about this national skill development corporation. So, it is being created in India and we have this uh, initiatives like skill India mission, skill India mission. So, MSME can use this opportunity to upgrade their skills especially their employees and for market access where in paragraph 4, it speaks about this national small industries corporation especially focusing on marketing of MSME products, MSME products and services and also we have this uh, procurement policy public procurement policy public. So, recently listed out by the government which says that uh, 25 percentage of government procurement should be from MSMEs. So, 25 percentage of products or services procured by the government should be coming from M MSMEs that is public procurement policy for small micro uh, micro and small enterprises for micro and small enterprises. So, that is another initiative and apart from this in paragraph 5 it speaks about Udyog Aadhaar registration. So, this helping in regulation of MSMEs. So, uh, like uh, individual others for MSMEs is also other is being provided and we have this MSME facilitation centers, MSME facilitation centers all done by government 
facilitation council we have for facilitation councils okay where they can uh, say the grievances regarding government regulations and all those things whereas in paragraph 6 it speaks about pradhan mandri employment generation pradhan mandri employment generation program so it's focusing on self employment and entrepreneurship which results in micro small medium enterprises so that is the focus of it and also we have this credit guarantee fund transfer for micro and small enterprises that is to provide financial assistance to the msmes so that is given in paragraph 7 that is credit guarantee trust for micro and small enterprises that is banks and financial assistance financial assistance so that is given there and uh, right now in this page we go for this paragraph 1 we saw that uh, financial assistance through banks is given whereas offset policy that is paragraph 2 so that is what being said especially in defense contracts so defense contracts uh, defense contracts so uh, around a certain percentage of contract value in Indian, Indian defense manufacturer percentage of contract value and we know that India is uh, importing lot of defense hardware and in the defense contract itself government says that there are certain percentage of your defense exports should be coming from India itself. So simple to say that if India is buying Rafale, it is not that all the um, uh, equipments of Rafale should be only from France. The uh, contract says that there should be certain components being manufactured from India which should be used in Rafale. So where MSMEs have greater opportunities. Next thing is paragraph 1, paragraph 2. So, in paragraph 1, IDX is there, that is Indian Defense uh, Innovation for Defense Excellence, that is called IDX, where they are focusing on uh, innovations uh, in defense manufacturing. Again, MSMEs can be playing a major role, that is defense innovations. So, IDX is conducted every year and especially focusing on startups and MSMEs all play a major role that is given paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 we have this defense industrial corridors defense industrial corridors. So, there are 16 six regions okay six regions across India is being identified for it and uh, defense manufacturing clusters are being promoted manufacturing clusters when you speak about defense manufacturing everything MSMEs are playing a major role in it micro small and medium enterprise are playing a major role in it so for that only government is identifying defense industrial corridor and another thing is FDA that is given in this paragraph 3 so paragraph 3 FDA investments in MSMEs when foreign direct investment comes into MSMEs what are the advantages that is given as 6 points that is access to capital so, MSMEs can get global capital technology, so they can get global technology from FDA investments and market taxes, so they can go for uh, that international markets, management expertise, management expertise and next we have brand building, so they can build brand at global level and finally employment generation, employment generation. So, FDA investments in uh, MSMEs has this potentials and this uh, benefits to the system. So, that is the point 6 points here which you can use it for your answer writing why MSMEs are required and why FDAs are required in MSMEs. And finally, uh, regarding financing opportunities in paragraph 1 we have this non-banking financial corporations finance companies they are also funding MSMEs and uh, it is very flexible criteria on which they fund flexible in funding that is NBFCs and second uh, possibility is uh, through peer to peer lending. So, peer to peer lending is also promoted for MSMEs where lower interest rates are given lower interest rates. So, where some successful MSMEs see the potential of uh, another MSME which is upcoming they can also fund their uh, particular MSMEs that is flexible loans are being given next thing is trade credit. 
So trade credit is primarily focused on MSMEs will supply products or services to the larger player where they will give some credit to them that is called trade credit. This also is a financial solution for MSMEs and we have this angel investors, angel investors and venture capitalists. This is primarily focused on MSMEs and startups combination and uh, there are some small companies coming out startup ideas which comes under the category of micro small and where this angel investors and venture capitalists can fund the particular uh, uh, ideas and fi final last one is crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is nothing but generally people are collecting together and funding the MSMEs and finally government schemes. Government schemes. So, these are some of the funding sources for MSME that is given here. Okay. The next article is startups reaching last mile. Startups reaching last mile, paragraph 1, 2, 3, and 4. In paragraph 1, it speaks about economic growth based on entrepreneurship and innovation. So, economic growth of any system is well ensured through entrepreneurship and innovation. So, that is the most important requirement and India is focusing on it. That is given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2, Startup India program was initiated in the year of 2016. So, Startup India program was initiated in the year of 2016, primarily focused on the first point that is entrepreneurship and innovation. And paragraph 3 speaks about importance of ecosystems of startup that is startup ecosystem. Ecosystem is nothing but the required environments that is incubators which you already saw in the previous uh, articles and accelerators, incubators, accelerators and funding agencies, funding agencies that is going in paragraph 3 and also primary focus of startup India initiative simplification and hand holding, funding and incentives which you already saw in the previous uh, 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 paragraphs or previous articles and paragraph 4 speaks about some of the data which is given by NASCOM. Expansion of NASCOM is National Association of Software and Services Companies and they have come out with some of the data that is by 2025 startups has, will create around 5 lakh new jobs, 5 lakh new jobs. So, that is a potential of startup ecosystems startups and uh, apart from this uh, foreign investments that is foreign investments by the year of 2019 data is given around dollar 14 billion. So, this we need to compare with 2014 which was around 4 billion 3.9 billion. So, we can see that huge jump in foreign investments regarding startups. These are some of the data is given by NASCOM which we can use it in your answers. So, uh, we can see the startup ecosystem and startup culture is thriving in India. Okay. Next page paragraph 1, paragraph 2, paragraph 3, paragraph 4, 5 and 6. So, paragraph 1 speaks about this global innovation index where India's rank is India's ranking that is 2021 we are in 48th position which we need to compare with 2015 that was around 81th position. So, we have immensely improved in this global innovation index. This can also be used as introduction for your answers and paragraph 2 speaks about the challenges all the remaining paragraph speaks about challenges and primary focus of challenges of uh, Indian startups, startup challenges. First challenges regarding uh, lack of access to funds access to funds that is the biggest problem for startup even though government has created a lot of opportunities but there is always a gap between startups and reaching the funds that is lack of access to funds. So, that is given in paragraph 2 especially early startups early stage startups early stage startups whereas in paragraph uh, uh, 2 also another thing is lack of skilled manpower. To make startups move to the next stages, requirement is more skilled manpower is required. So, that right from the different cycles of startups, right from ideation to scaling, where high level of skilled workforce is required, that is also lacking in India, that is given in paragraph 2. 
and paragraph 3 another biggest challenge of startups is startups are primarily focused on technology so they are not in agriculture healthcare agri healthcare healthcare and uh, education where startups are not focusing on it this is the area where india needs startups but in india right now technological startups are more rather than startups in agri healthcare and education that's another biggest challenge that is given in paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 says that current position of india so india is the third largest startup ecosystem for that they have given the data around 50,000 startups are there. This is the data which we can use for answer and paragraph 5 speaks about promoting startups right now Atal Innovation Mission. So, Atal Innovation Mission is focusing on startups that is given in paragraph 4 and also we have Smart Cities Mission. Smart Cities Mission which is also promoting startups especially to solve the problems of cities. So, as paragraph 6 focuses on so uh, regulation issues. So, regulation issues are another biggest problem in startup at the especially lack of clarity in defining startups. Defining startups that is another biggest problem in India that is given in paragraph 6, which creates a lot of confusion among uh, stakeholders and uh, especially related to IPR issues. IPR issues are all coming because of this definition of what a startup means. So, that is given in paragraph 6. Next paragraph 1, next page paragraph 2, paragraph 3 and paragraph 4. Paragraph 1 speaks about the concept of startup India, sorry stand up India. So, like startup India, startup India is focusing on women, comma SC and ST entrepreneurs that is the focus of stand up India. So, right now we can see the startup is also being democratized, democratized or it is primarily focused on social goals also where women and SESTs which are considered to be the weaker section of India is being encouraged through this program called stand up India that is given in paragraph 1 and uh, also we have national handicap finance development corporation. So, this is also focusing on differentially able people in startup cultures financial assistance for startups. So, this clearly shows this startup is not only being focused on economic angle social angle is also given by the government that is going in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 speaks about ministry of commerce and industries. So, where we can see that uh, led startups in India has increased 50 percentage of women in startups. So, as per ministry of commerce and industries it said that 50 percentage of startup India where we can see women are being part of part of it. So, in startup that is the data is given and similarly we have SC and ST entrepreneurs also taking part in startup that is given in paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. So, contradicting information are given in paragraph 3 especially Oxfam India. This is an uh, uh, organization or we call this pressure groups or similar to it is not part of the government they have given some data. So, uh, only 17 percentage of startups are being funded by women, women funded, women funded and 1 percentage is with disabilities, 1 percentage with disabilities and finally, paragraph 4 says that. So, startups especially stand up India is focusing on marginalized communities and uh, providing opportunities to remove social discrimination on all those things ok. So, uh, it has increased opportunities for weaker sections that is given there. What are the opportunities for example, to avoid social discrimination funding funding is there and training opportunities. So, training opportunities access to find funds all are taken care by the stand up India. Okay, thank you.